Hi, I'm R.G. Skadberg, attorney with CCSK Law, where we do simplify the law for you. Thanks for visiting the website, Now What? What to Do When Someone Dies. I created this website as a resource. I've dealt with the loss of close family members, my father, aunt, other members of my family. Uh, and obviously in my profession, I work with people on a regular basis who have lost family members. Uh, dealing with it personally and then watching people deal with it, I, I've seen so much confusion out there. You could have the world's greatest estate plan, but when someone actually passes, there's some intricacies and some things that need to happen and some things that seem like they need to happen that causes confusion. Now couple that with the emotion of losing someone and it just creates a very disorienting situation. Emotional roller coaster, lots of things coming at you, much confusion and not a lot of clarity. So I've put together this website, the download that you can get, and eventually a book called Now What? What to Do When Someone Dies to try to help you through the morass of logistics mixed with um, managing the emotional uh, impact on making those logistic decisions. Uh, one of the things, as I just was recently talking to a friend whose mother passed, was that word disorienting. Uh, he, he was explaining to me just the emotions of losing your mother. That is a very, very emotional uh, circumstance. And the problem that he was struggling with was all these different things coming at him that were seemingly needing to be decided in the immediate. And the reality is there's very little that has to be done immediately other than dealing with the emotion and working through a funeral. So uh, basically the what to do when someone dies is a... 10 step you know bullet point list that kind of walks you through the things as they happen kind of chronologically because uh, different things are going to happen to uh, in different ways but but probably more importantly is it's a it gives you some understanding of what you can put the brakes on what you can put off from a decision standpoint and when you really do need to make some decisions i'll give you the first bullet point and that is in the immediate days and, and maybe week or so after someone passes, what you need to do is very little. Um, in our someplace deep inside of us, when we lose someone and we're dealing with that emotion, we want to try to do things to maybe divert that emotional uh, loss, that emotional challenge that we're dealing with, just the wave of emotions. And so sometimes we create kind of a checklist in our mind of things that we need to do. In reality, we don't know what those are, and we're just kind of guessing. Now, sometimes things will present themselves to you, but it may not be the right time to be dealing with that. The really only main logistical thing that needs to happen for most people is to get through the funeral process. So when I say to do little, it really is the funeral's enough. Uh, you're going to have, again, emotions. You're going to be having to coordinate uh, people, things, timing, all these different things associated with the funeral. That is plenty to deal with in the immediate. So focus on that. The thing I tell, about, tell people about the funeral is if you're too caught up in too many things, you're going to miss the opportunity to truly honor and celebrate the person who's passed. This may seem like a weird thing to say, but it's really dawned on me more recently uh, the, the stories you'll hear about the person that you love or care deeply about from other people's perspective will give you a whole new appreciation for what that person meant to other people. You certainly know what this person meant to you, but it's, it's just such an awesome experience to hear what this person meant to other people. And it gives you a greater appreciation as to what that person's reach in the world was. So we honor, we celebrate, we work through the funeral. There will be plenty of time for making decisions and doing other things. I think, again, there's this checklist that suddenly pops up in our mind. we got to run to the bank. we got to worry about creditors. i got to tell somebody I'm the executor. Those are things that are to come. Um, do very little. Legally, you probably don't have much authority to do anything anyway. Probably no one does. So focus on what we can get done. Work through the funeral process honor and celebrate the person and just, you know, deal with that. Let the emotion play out. Don't try to put it aside and occupy yourself with a bunch of things to do otherwise.
Um, the, the balance of the list is similar, just little bullet points, things to do at certain times, things not to do prior or ever. Um, and you can get it. It's a, it's a little downloadable guide. If you put your name and email address in the boxes below, I'll send it off to you. There's no obligation. There's no expense. It's just your free guide. I just I feel so passionate about this um, circumstance that people get get caught up in that I want to give some guidance to you and your family or your friends, whoever it might be that's dealing with this. So your name and email in the box below, I'll send you the guide. It's downloadable and it will just give you some things to think about. There are some key things in there like, you know, who is in charge? How is that person appointed to be in charge? Um, what's probate? Do I need to worry about probate? How do I engage an attorney? And when do I engage an attorney? I'll do a, a, an actual whole video talking about attorneys uh, because it's important to understand what they charge and why they charge, that everybody doesn't charge the same thing. Everybody doesn't have the same approach and attitude to the process. Um, and, and not everybody needs to even engage an attorney on a very high level. Uh, so it's, it's important to understand, you know, when to engage an attorney, how to engage an attorney, and maybe some of the key things you want to look for in that attorney relationship. We'll talk about how to deal with bank accounts and property and beneficiaries and all the different things along those lines in a nice, neat, little orderly fashion. Like I said, mostly chronological so you can understand what needs to be done at the beginning, what needs to be done in the middle, and how you eventually wrap things up. So uh, name and email in the box below. I look forward to uh, sending this out to you, and I hope you find it a helpful resource. Uh, do take care. Again, I, I certainly feel for what you're going through or what you may be going through soon. I hope this guide gives you um, some peace of mind to work through it efficiently and effectively.